Picture this. You have a cool idea for a cloud application and you want to develop it as fast as possible. You also want to get it to production as smoothly as possible. In this video, I am going to show you how you can use local stack for your local development environment and how you can smoothly transition your application to the real AWS cloud platform with minimal configuration to it. Let's dive in and let's have a look at what we're going to be working with. We have this diagram over here. And at the top part, you can see that we will use a React front-end application that will be our user interface. This will be in charge of displaying information and uploading pictures. The backend will be provided by a Spring Boot application. Both of these apps will run on localhost. The backend will communicate with a bunch of AWS services. Our entities are called shipments, and they will be stored in a DynamoDB table, and each shipment has a picture associated with it that will go into an S3 bucket. Every time you add a picture to the S3 bucket, a Lambda function will be triggered, and it will do some validation and processing to the file. By validation, I mean that it will check the extension and make sure it's a proper picture. For example, a text file will be rejected and replaced with a placeholder, and the processing consists of a watermark added to the picture. This will send a message to an SNS topic, and then it will go to an SQS queue. Our backend application is listening on this queue, and once it receives the message, it will use server-sent events to refresh the front-end application where we can see the picture with the watermark on it. We'll have a look at two scenarios. One is called production, and our application will be communicating with real AWS services. And the second scenario is called development, and our application will use emulated services on the local stack container on our local machine. We will use Terraform to provision our infrastructure, and basically the first scenario can be boiled down to this. Um, Terraform will run against AWS to create resources there. And in the second scenario, we will use the same Terraform configuration file to create the same resources in the local stack container. In terms of technical overview, uh, what you can expect from this application is that we will use AWS SDKs to help us interact with the resources, with the AWS resources. Um, our backend application is using Spring Profiles, which means that our application can be configured based on the environment it will run in. We have seen that we have a production environment and a development environment, and each one will have different configurations. Our infrastructure as code tool will be Terraform, and we will use a, sing a singular Terraform configuration file to maintain consistency across all the environments. Before we dive in and have a look at the code of the application, I want to tell you that you can find this sample application here in the local stack samples org, and you can go and explore it and find more, more sample applications that you can use to play around with local stack and, and AWS for that matter. Okay, let's have a look at our application. We are here in my IDE. And this is our Terraform configuration file. Uh, Terraform lets you declaratively define the infrastructure that you want to have created on your cloud platform. So here you can see that we have our definitions of the providers that we want to use, um, some resources, some variables, and we can start defining, for example, here we have our AWS S3 bucket. Um, we will be using a random suffix for each bucket name because you're probably familiar with that. Uh, the S3 buckets need to have a unique name. Then we have our DynamoDB table definition. Uh, this uh, Terraform configuration file will also um, populate the table with four entities so we don't have to manually introduce them using the front end. Um, then we have some more configurations for our Lambda functions. Uh, we can also define IM policies here and so on and so forth. If you scroll down to the bottom of this file, you will see that the names of the buckets will be written into this file. And at startup, our Spring Boot application will know what bucket to communicate with. Okay, 
So here I have some tabs that help me navigate between folders. Uh, you can see I have my backend, frontend, our Terraform file. The, the Terraform tab will um, correspond to the Terraform folder. And here we can start um, creating our resources on the real AWS cloud. We can run Terraform in it. Terraform in it. This command will initialize our environment and will download the necessary providers, the plugins, the modules that it needs. And we can see some changes happening in our Terraform folder here. Terraform plan. This is the command that will give you a plan of the changes that are about to be applied to the cloud platform. So in this case, we will see a full list of resources because this is what will change. We don't have anything created yet. You can go over these and once everything looks correct, we can move on to Terraform apply. And we're going to be using the auto approve flag so that we skip the, the yes or no question. Okay, now our resources are being created on AWS. Let's have a look at our application while we wait. This normally takes about 30, 40 seconds. This is where our backend, um, no, this is where our Lambda function lives. This is also a Java application. We built it into a Java jar that we will pass on to the Lambda function and it will know what to do with it. This is our front end application. In the, in the shipment list front end folder. We're not going to be drilling into that right now. And this is our backend application. It's a typical Spring Boot application where you have controllers and services that will deal, deal with your business logic. Um, the bucket name class will know how to read the, um, the bucket names from this file where they're being written uh, upon creation. We have some configurations for the S3 client, for example. We have the SQS client defined, the DynamoDB client defined, defined, and they all um, extend the superclass AWS client config, where you have the AWS access key, the secret key, and the region defined. Uh, now for the production environment, our application will read the values from this file. You need to remember to export these values, these credentials. Um, each user will have different ones. Uh, you can see that the, the DynamoDB endpoint is pointing to the AWS, the Amazon AWS platform, and so is the S3 and the SQS endpoints. So now when we start our backend application, this these are the properties that um, our app will read. First, let's go to the front end folder. And once you clone it, you will, you will need to run npm install. So you have all the, all your dependencies, um, installed. But to save up on time, we have done this already and we can go ahead and do npm start. Our front end application will start on localhost port 3000. And we can see we have an empty list at this point. Let's go back and start our backend application. So to start the backend application for the production environment, we will use Maven Spring Boot Run uh, with the flag Spring Boot Run Profiles equals to prod. Uh, this is for production. And we can start our backend application now. And once we go back to the front end, we can ref refresh it. And this is a list of our shipments. We can check on AWS. And we have a shipment table, a DynamoDB table, and we can explore the table items. And we can see that we have exactly four elements and none of them have images. Let's go to the front end application and add some pictures. So we will use the International Internet Measuring System, which is called Banana for Scale, 
So we need to figure out what the volume of each shipment is. So by comparison to a banana, we can see that the first picture will be of a large object. And you can see the watermark has also been added to the picture. Let's try another one. Okay. The refresh is a bit slow. The third one. And let's try a text file and see how that behaves. Okay, so we get a subtle message that the extension of our file is wrong and we need to change it. Okay, we can delete some of the elements. And this is basically the functionality of this application. It's not very complicated. All right, we have seen this. Uh, now in the logs of our backend application, we can also see that the message from the queue has been received and that the objects have been successfully deleted. Great. We can go ahead and destroy the resources now. We can run Terraform destroy. That way we don't leave them running and we don't get extra costs for that. And this will also take a few seconds. Yes, we agree to that. And we should probably stop our backend application because once the queue is gone, it will start throwing some error messages and it won't be happy. In the meantime, we can go ahead and start our local stack container and move on to the development environment. So here in our root fo folder, we can go ahead and do docker compose up and I will show you the docker compose file. We are only using a singular container definition here. We are using the latest local stack image. This is using the community version, but I encourage you to go and explore the, the pro version. You will need an auth token for that, but you will have access to a lot more services and a bunch of cool features. Uh, we set the debug flag to one and we will be enforcing IAM policies. Let's go back to the Terraform folder. Okay, our resources have been destroyed. Let's run a cleanup script that will clean up all those extra files that have been created by Terraform. By the way, those are meant to keep track of your stack, what has changed and what changes will be applied. Um, and for the development environment, we will use a tool called TF Local. This is basically a lightweight script around the Terraform CLI, and it will point to the local stack container instead of you having to define the endpoint in the Terraform configuration file. So let's do TF local init and initialize our environment. And you can see that it will be behaving exactly the same. Okay, we're going to skip the plan phase because we already know that and go to TF, TF local apply dash dash auto approve. And this will start creating our resources within the local stack container. Again, this will also take about 30 seconds or so. It's usually faster than creating resources on the real AWS cloud platform. And we can see that stuff is starting to move here. If you're curious, you can also check the logs of the local stack container and you can follow along. You can see that all the resources are being created, all the actions um, that are being done, you can see them here. Okay, and our application, our backend application, this time around, will be reading the configurations from this file, the application-dev.yaml file. Here we have a bunch of dummy credentials, and you can see that our endpoints are being configured to point to localhost.localstack.cloud port 4566. Okay, our resources have been created. 
can go back here and start our application again, this time with the dev flag. And our application has started. We can go to the front end and refresh it. And you can see we have a fresh list of shipments just like before on AWS, except this time there will be no resources here. The shipment table is gone. Okay, so all of this is running on local stack. Let's see if the behavior is the same. We'll have a few seconds for the Java Lambda function cold start, but once that um, happens, it's smooth sailing. See how much faster it is? And you can see the watermark. And let's try it with a text file. Okay. It is working as expected. And we can delete our pictures now. So that was pretty much it. And I hope you enjoyed this demo. The the destruction of the resources is as easy as Docker Compose down. You don't have to worry about getting extra costs for leaving resources running overnight. So local stack is obviously the right choice for local development. And you can see how easy it is to trust it due to its high parity with the AWS platform and the maintained um, exact same functionality for our application. So this has been Anka from LocalStack. Hope to see you in another demo. Thank you for watching. Bye.